Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is David Patrick Harry with Church of the Eternal Logos. And today, I have a bit of a somber stream. I think it'll be a fairly fun stream, but we need to keep it respectful. But uh, today's topic is regarding a popular fitness YouTuber named Connor Murphy, of which I was not too familiar with until uh, a few videos watching More Plates, More Dates, about a popular fitness YouTuber who began in 2020 to get into various psychedelics, specifically ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a particular brew that comes from South American Amazonian shamanism. And there are multiple ayahuasca cults throughout the Amazon. And it's sort of the uh, epitome of psychedelic shamanism. When people think of psychedelic shamanism, they tend to think of the Amazon. Some people think of peyote in North America. Some people think of Amanita muscaria in Siberia, uh, iboga in Africa. There's all types of substances used for shamanic, illuministic practice. But today we're going to be talking about how Connor Murphy, again, this popular YouTuber, had an ayahuasca uh, experience in 2020. And from there, he, I believe, faked his own death after, after that experience. Um, he was in a, a mental uh, institute for a week or so. And then when, after, getting out of that, he continued to partake in more 
ayahuasca, even to the point of beginning to microdose ayahuasca. Now, for those of you who aren't sophisticated with your, with your uh, cognitive inebriating substances, uh, ayahuasca is a DMT brew. Dimethyltryptamine is considered to be one of the most powerful psychoactive substances. It's part of the tryptamine family along with psilocybin and uh, some various other psychedelics. And, and the tryptamines are always considered to be the safer psychedelics because of their similarity to neurotransmitters like serotonin and stuff like that. Therefore, the body is able to break down things like di dimethyltryptamine much easier than some of the other substances. However, you don't typically microdose these things. And for my understanding, for much of 2021, Connor Murphy has been microdosing uh, ayahuasca, uh, according to him, he would even drink it every two hours during, throughout the day. And this is not advised, no matter who you are, regarding the use of these substances. And in so doing, uh, he went from his sort of clickbaity uh, fitness uh, type content that his YouTube channel, again, became very popular. It's, it's uh, well over 2 million uh, subscribers. And the content radically changed. It began to talk more about yoga, this uh, Pramasati type yoga experience that I guess he came up with where basically he's just staring in the eyes of a girl who's uh, sitting next to him in front of him in uh, sort of se sexual suggestive positions. And this is, uh, this is something, this is his new, new endeavor now is to, as he perceives it, he is the incarnation of Jesus Christ. He is now here to enlighten the masses. And he believes himself to be God, and he's very, very open about that. And so we as Christians, again, I, I've heard a lot of people talk about Connor Murphy, but I've, had, I've heard very little people talk about it in regards to a spiritual context, in regards to the demonic, in regards to spiritual possession, in regards to, again, the spiritual worldview that he's inhabiting, and how does that correlate to all these other religious worldviews throughout the world? Well, obviously, we come from an Orthodox Christian perspective. We believe that to be the one true religion in the world, and we make apologetics for that. And so today, I think, is going to be a very good example of much of the things I've talked about in previous streams. The apotheosis of psychedelics, this idea that you are God, self-illumination, how this relates to, again, any sort of illuministic spirituality, i.e. Luciferianism. And, and, and I, in the title, you probably saw me, Lucifer's False Light. Again, we're going to unpack that here in a little bit more um, regarding all this stuff. But how illuministic forms of spirituality themselves uh, often subtly twist and manipulate things that we would perceive to be true as Christians. Um, but their worldview goes entirely in opposition to us. And so we've talked about how very often in these illuministic frameworks where people perceive themselves to be God through various meditative, yogic, or psychedelic practices, how that often leads to goddess worship, uh, a sort of feminized worldview, worship of creation, worship of the universe, you are the universe, you're the sentient apparatus of the universe. We've heard all these ideas before. And so today, I, well, hold on, before I even get into that, I think one of the things we as Christians, what we can offer to this conversation is actually praying for him. I think that, again, at a sincere level, as we, again, I have tons of videos, we're going to go and listen to him talk about his transition, his worldview in his own words. And so remember so much of what I've said in previous streams. It's going to be uh, incredibly exemplified by him in this new state of spiritual enlightenment he claims to be in. And so again, we as Christians, I think the best thing we can do is pray for him. I do not, I do not know Connor Murphy personally. I wasn't even familiar with his content. I had watched one of the the, the clickbaity stuff he used to do, where basically he's always taking his shirt off. He was an aesthetic fitness guy, uh, sort of uh, you know a natural bodybuilder, if you will. And he'd do all these pranks, basically to get his shirt off and girls touch his abs and stuff like that. And and that's how he amassed such a large YouTube channel. And so one of the things that I noticed, again, preparing for today's stream and looking at his content is the way in which he's using his perceived enlightenment to do many of the same things that he was doing before. And so as we'll see in today's video, him talking about how he wants to make money, he's going to be a millionaire, how many orgies he has, how much sex he has, in which he has his own OnlyFans now. 
in which he, he I assume I wouldn't know what goes on there. Potentially, uh, you know, por- pornographic type content. I know he he does his yoga type stuff, his, his tantric breathing practices with with women there. I know that he's eaten his own feces on his OnlyFans, and so. We'll see, again, the transgression of all natural boundaries. And we've talked about how psychedelics dissolve boundaries at a cognitive level. And so when you go into these inebriating states, uh, wh- whether it be dimethyltryptamine and its various uh, various ways it can be consumed, or LSD, or psilocybin mushrooms, or whatever it is, a boga, is that it's the dissolution is dissolving all conceptual boundaries. And this is the experience that we're all one, that you're God, that you're the universe, right? This is a phenomenological experience for many people when they embark upon these psychedelic journeys. And often they don't have a spiritual or a philosophical or a theological uh, rooting to kind of put all these things back into their correct categories. And so we'll see today, again, a lot of logical contradictions. We'll see a man who is in pursuit of pure hedonism in the name of enlightenment. And this is part of... Lucifer's false light. And that's why I tied Lucifer's false light, because this this self-enlightenment, this self-illumination, this pursuit of the true light, again, Lucifer, Lucius, the light bringer, um, he is the manipulator, the deceiver of the false light. And this false light is always a sort of self-worship. It's always a sort of self-narcissism. And again, this is tied to the original sin itself. Lucifer, before the fall, was the most beautiful and the most intelligent of the created angels. And that's why he loved himself. He loved himself so much that he wanted to be worshipped over the creator of the universe, over the Trinity, over the true God, the true living God. And that's why he was cast out of heaven, cast down to his kingdom, which is the earthly kingdom. And that was his kingdom before the fall. But now he's relegated to it in his uh, diminutive state as Satan now, or the devil, or the evil one, however you want to frame it. And so Lucifer is technically the, the angelic name for the same entity. And Lucifer, Luciferianism, is different from Satanism. Satanism is just the outright inversion of everything that Christianity would deem good. Luciferianism is more about, uh, about um, secret knowledge, about self-illumination, about self-worship, about self-realization that you are God, that you are powerful. And we find this in Aleister Crowley's Thelema. We find this replete within the psychedelic community, generally speaking. And this is also the basis of the New Age. This is the basis of, of many Hindu uh, practices as well. So even though Hinduism would never frame it as Luciferianism, that's how we are going to talk about it. And again, when we listen to Connor talk about himself, we're going to see the Luciferianism uh, display itself over and over and over. But as he's gone down this path with the continual use of psychedelics, of which is this stream obviously is a danger. This this uh, discussion on Connor Murphy is is highlighting the potential cognitive dangers, the psychological dangers of getting into these inebriating drugs without, one, knowing what you're doing, one, uh, having an understanding of your own psychological profile, and just being reckless and, and pursuing, again, pure hedonism, because that's really what he's doing in this new enlightenment state. And so even though I would say the way he describes his own spirituality is much more Luciferian, we'll see that he's in favor of uh, eating another man's semen, including his own semen, that he drinks his own urine, that he eats his own feces, that he has his own OnlyFans, presumably doing uh, sexual content with other people, that uh, he claims that he is Jesus Christ reincarnated. He claims he is God. He, uh, you'll see that there's sort of homoerotic elements in all this stuff. Again, all these are transgression of boundaries. All these things that I'm talking about are violations of we, as Orthodox Christians, would understand as logos, as there's an objective order to reality. And that is how we get in touch with the true God, through the uncreated energies. So he is into, again, this idea that he has supernatural magical powers, similar to wizardry, similar to so many other things that we've uh, seen. And again, if you are familiar with Satanism itself and you understand how the theistic side, because again, Satanism is more complicated. You, have to, you always have to be nuanced, right? There, there's Levian atheistic forms of Satanism. That isn't the same thing as theistic forms of Satanism. 
where people uh, see there's there's again like the the Church of Satan is more of the Levian uh, type of the atheistic bent where it's it's more about this radical libertarian uh, basically worldview where all things go versus the theistic Satanism where they be- literally believe in the conjuration of the evil one and doing all that but they perceive it again as he's the light bringer right he's the one that presents true freedom because within the Luciferian realm Lucifer doesn't have any of these boundaries you have to stay in. And that's why the psychedelics are so pernicious, because they dissolve the boundaries at a experiential level. And again, we'll hear Connor over and over and over again base his entire worldview on his experiences. And he's going to talk about how people believe in the objective reality, and this is a trap because reality is actually subjective. Again, the same thing we always talk about. That leads back to a relativistic epistemology. And again, if you're in a a relativistic epistemology, how can you differentiate right from wrong? And that is why, again, I always say over and over, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled is to convince people he didn't exist. And that's what happens when people get into a relativistic worldview, because there is no right or wrong. In fact, for many of these people, they see right or wrong as the symbol of the yin and yang, that somehow they balance each other out, that somehow good and bad, uh, good and evil that the, they're eternally battling each other. This is called dualism. Again, we as Orthodox Christians, we as Christians don't believe in eternal dualism. Evil doesn't exist as a positive force. Evil is not battling God for eternity. The way that we understand that, for those of you who aren't aware, is that Christianity, the way that we understand evil, is that we are made in the image of God. And because of that, we have free will. And, we, and then creatures, to do the right thing, is always choosing the will of God. But sin, evil, evil itself, is a free choice by created entities. So evil has a negative existence. Evil only exists because created entities made in the image of God, having free will, chose evil things. That doesn't mean evil is battling God. God is up here. Satan is down here. The evil one's down here. We don't have this worldview. And so you'll see even in some of the videos that we're going to talk about or show, Connor doesn't even believe in free will. He thinks this is an illusion. This is an illusion. That, that reality is a determined process. That creation is perfect. Uh, again, the same things that we see over and over and over. In fact, one of the videos, uh, he is now, so in this drastic decline of his life, uh, he's even been charged with child porn, and he's listed now as a child uh, child predator, sexual predator, and I will show you that video, which he even made a video, and he claims it's because like a 17-year-old girl or something like that, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know the details, I don't know the details, And so, again, that's why we need to have compassion on him. We need, again, as Christians, to probably pray for him and pray for him to get through this. From my latest, from my understanding, the latest update, again, um, I got a lot of my information. I first found out about this through More Plates, More Dates, the fitness channel, uh, uh, bodybuilding-type men's channel. Uh, So... I saw a few updates. I saw a few things in the last like month and a half or so of him posting things about this Connor Murphy guy, but I never was familiar with his content. I never really watched. But um, when I started to get into this stuff, I was blown away, and that's why I feel like I needed to make a stream on it. And that was based on the most recent update from Most Plates, More Plates, More Dates, where he talked about Connor Murphy and how he was. Uh, it's believed to be that he was a, he was arrested or he was in police custody, and so he was in somebody else's care. Uh, the last people heard of, but mo- a lot of people haven't talked to him. They don't know. They don't know if he's with his family. They don't know if his family. Ha- they don't know what exactly is going on. So um, what I wanted to do in this stream then is a talk about this topic from a spiritual perspective. I don't again. I don't know Connor Murphy. I don't know his background. All I know is what is available publicly. And so we're going to move through a series of videos uh, in a chronological order and seeing the sort of state of his progression and his mental degradation. And now he's to the point where, um, you know, it's sad. It's, it's really sad. And so what we're going to hit on again is he believes that he's Jesus Christ reincarnated. We're going to be talking about him drinking semen, both his own and another man's. We'll be talking about him drinking urine, eating his own feces, uh, the sort of homoeroticism. Um, he is the universe. He doesn't believe in anything. Uh, he, do- he doesn't believe in free will. 
He believes that he has omniscient magical powers and he has the power of prophecy. He, uh, again, well, I don't know about this child porn thing. Again, we'll watch his five minute video where he talks about how he was charged with child porn or something like that. Um, he believes in a relativistic, uh, subjective world and how that, that subjectivity is necessary for you to realize that you're God and therefore it sort of trumps the objective dimensions of reality. He will also get into how he has no logical consistency. Again, as we move through some of him talking about his own things, uh, a lot of things just don't even add up. And then the tantric practice, he's very much into tantrism, which is what we consider the left-handed path. If anybody who studied Hinduism or world religions know that tantric practices are called the left-handed path. And in the left-handed path, you do things backwards. Again, the same thing in a, in a Western civilization, in a Christian context, that left-handed path would be considered Satanism, the inversion of everything in its correct order, the right-handed path, the Logos path, Jesus Christ. So by inverting all those things and inverting the Eucharist, right, because Satanism, theistic Satanism, literally eats, uh, you know, the inversion of the Eucharist. So instead of the body and blood of God, it's menstrual blood, it's semen, it's pus, it's feces, and they'll consume that at a ritualistic level because that is an inversion of the world. And by doing that, they believe that they actually attain power because they transgress these boundaries that hold other people back. But we believe by staying within the boundaries that they perceive to hold people back, that we can move more and become more like God. So, and in the boundaries, as we talked about, is tied to masculinity and how men are the ones who enforce and maintain boundaries in society. So, all this psychedelic stuff is, is part of the larger effeminization of man and our culture. But we're going to also talk about the major inflation of one's ego. I've talked previously how people get into the, the, the psychedelics and they always want to talk about their ego death, my ego death, my ego death. And while they may have a profound experience, again, with the, with the dissolution of boundaries and the dissolution of the cognitive boundary of one's own ego, when they come out of that psychedelic state, often they have an inflated sense of oneself. They actually have an inflated ego because they perceive themselves to have uh, esoteric gnosis, right? Secret knowledge. And that secret knowledge then elevates them amongst their peers because they don't know the mysteries of reality. They don't know the true secrets. And therefore, I, as an enlightened being, I, as more elevated, more illuminated, can help you out. And so um, the inflation of one's ego is going to be very prominent with uh, Connor Murphy. And it's not that he didn't have an ego before, obviously, uh, have a very successful YouTube channel. The type of content he made it or made is a little bit more, you could say, superficial. But uh, but the way he's going now, it's like in the name of not having an ego, he's incredibly megalomaniac. He's a megalomaniac. That's what I'm trying to say. But th how big his ego is, it's actually astonishing. And so in the name of how lack of an ego, he's talking about how he's going to enlighten the masses. He's come to save the world. He's going to uh, make other people rich. He's going to become one of the wealthiest men in the world. It, it's, it's wild stuff. And again, we're going to get into it and hear it from him specifically. Um, also, we'll talk about his faking his own death, or at least other people might uh, get into that as we watch. And, uh, and, and again, in the transgression, the tantrism, right, the transgression of natural boundaries, he's also into not washing his hands. And you'll see, again, from the early videos, because we'll start around November of 2020. And so from November to 2020 to where we're at now, you'll see that just the cleanliness of himself is totally going down. And, and to the point where we get at these later videos, you can see how dirty his hands are. And he talks about how he doesn't wash his hands because it betters his immune system and all this different stuff. So... So that is what we're going to be getting into, right? And I got plenty of videos. It should be a fun Friday night stream. Again, I hope everyone's having a wonderful TGIF. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying their Friday. Uh, just a quick few announcements before we actually start watching some of Connor Murphy's uh, recent videos. I want to say that the book club is live. Guys, go over to davidpatrickherry.com forward slash shop if you are interested in the book club. Again, Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we are going to be uh, doing our book club, and we'll be reading Justin 
Martyr's First Apology, St. Justin Martyr's First Apology. It's going to be a lot of fun. If that is something you would be interested in, go to the website right now. Click that link. It's $5. You'll purchase it. You'll get a download link. You download the full PDF of the First Apology, and I will send you a Zoom link for Tuesday's meeting where we will meet with other brothers and sisters interested in these topics to discuss the first apology. So read as much as you want, read as little as you want, it's up to you. But Tuesday night, we will be having our very first Logos book club meeting. Again, I hope you guys can join us. And we will be, again, reading the first apology by Justin Martyr. Very, very important apologetic work for early Christianity. Uh, also, I want to give a major thank you to everyone who has gone to the website and become a website member. There is a second half to this video. If you guys would be interested in hearing me talk about my own ayahuasca experience, going to an ayahuasca ceremony, that will be live over at the website for members. So uh, members will be able to go to the website and that will be available as soon as this stream is over. I will make that public. It's up on the website. I just haven't made it public yet. And so as soon as the stream is over today, there will be a 30-some minute video for members only uh, describing my own ayahuasca experience and my takeaways from it. Of course, it's not an endorsement, but I talk about my experience, what happened, my perceived revelations, and how it did or didn't impact my life. So if that's something you might be interested in, that's over at the website for members only. And, uh, and also, if you guys would be interested in talking about theology, philosophy, or any uh, life, fitness, whatever it is, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one over at the shop. If you go to David Patrick Harry forward slash shop, you'll see that there is new merch, of course, if you'd be interested in the new merch, but you could also purchase a one-on-one -on -one session if you're interested. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, check that out there. Okay, so now let's get into today's topic. Uh, if you could, please smash that like. If you guys just joined, smash that like. It's always greatly appreciated. So what... Okay, so first, let me just show you... Let's just do a, watch a video of a run-through of uh, Connor Murphy and sort of where he is at right now. So here we're going to watch... Um, let's turn this on. Bam. Okay, and so we're gonna watch this Murphy, this uh, this video. This not not Murphy, but Connor Murphy's uh, dangerous addiction to DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And this is a video done by Joey TV. Again, I'm not familiar with them. I'm not familiar with most of these people, but you'll see in this video um, the sort of trajectory of Connor Murphy. So I figured this would be a great video to start with. It's eight minutes long. Uh, to highlight his journey and how this will relate again to the videos that we'll watch afterwards as we document his process into uh, really his, his psychedelic drug-induced psychosis. And we'll talk, we'll, again, we'll talk more in details after we watch this. So check it out. Science proves that I'm God. Government can't stop that motherfucker, cause I'm President Barack Obama. Woods, Tiger Woods, guns in the hood with Tiger Woods, we go to the Connor Murphy at one point in time was one of the biggest fitness influencers on YouTube, amassing a channel with 2.5 million subscribers. His popular videos followed the general premise of talking with girls, whether it be in person or on Omegle, and then revealing his ripped physique and filming their reaction. Everything for Connor's social media career seemed to be going smoothly until one year ago, where he posted a 10 minute video in which he appeared to have a mental breakdown and talked about things ranging from his animosity towards his parents and how he was unhappy with all of the success he had achieved over the years with his channel. I fuck three fucking girls a day. Three girls a day. Do you believe that? Fuck yeah, you do. Look at my YouTube channel. I'm popular. I'm famous. And this doesn't come from ego. A few weeks after the video was posted, he deleted it and uploaded a video on his second channel titled The Truth, discussing what had happened. So a few days prior to making that video, I engaged in this spiritual ceremony where I took this mind-altering substance known as ayahuasca. 
a plant that contains the psychedelic DMT. DMT is known as one of, if not the strongest psychedelic substances in the world. It is not to be played around with. It is so strong that people have taken DMT and entered what they call the third dimension, in which they have an outer body experience. In Connor's case, it seems like he tripped too often and abused the substance, leading to his rather quick mental decline. It began with him posting a 40-day fast video in which he only consumed water. Yes, you heard that correctly. 40 days, no food, just water. No vitamins, no supplements, and of course, not a single calorie. It's also safe to assume that during this time he was also taking psychedelics. Oh, and I forgot to mention, he spent two weeks in a psych ward shortly prior to fasting. Um, my team is sometimes referred uh, by the police to see if people are interested in mental health services. And so we were just calling to see if you're interested in that and uh, that kind of thing. I want you to imagine what 40 straight days of fasting combined with heavy psychedelic use can do to the brain. The strain it puts it under is immense. And not only are you depriving your body and brain of the vital nutrients food provides them, but you are also making your brain work extremely hard when you fill it with psychedelics. It's like removing the oil from a car and then deciding to go on a road trip. Very quickly, the car breaks down. In Connor's case, the car is his mental state. There's gonna be a great flood. Michigan, you're safe, LA. You can go fuck yourself. Great flood wiping out everything. Why the fuck? After the fasting video, he created his own subset of yoga called Prima Sati Yoga in which you have close contact with another individual and do strange movements together while typically maintaining eye contact. Around this time, he started referring to himself as God, though he explained this through several videos discussing his thoughts on religion. I am God. Up to this point, you could still make the argument that Connor wasn't crazy, but rather that he had enlightened himself and found meaning in his life. In the subsequent months, however, it became obvious that Connor had thrusted himself into full-fledged, psychedelic-induced psychosis. It is incredible to be crazy! I'm free! I'm free from suffering! I'm free from insecurities! At this point, there are really too many examples to count, but some of them include the following. Discussing why hand-washing doesn't work. Drinking his own urine. I drink it, and I rub it on my body, including my hair. Urine therapy has also been rumored to help hair growth. I believe it probably does to an extent how much, I don't know. I do this one to two times a day. Drinking another man's semen. Yes, you heard that correctly. His divine protein shake. Yeah. And getting surgery without anesthesia and predicting terrorist events that had occurred. I feel like I might be in a freaking psychosis. Correct! His psychedelic use was so heavy at this point that he posted a video in which he claimed he made his pineal gland produce so much DMT on its own through chronic use that when he consumed massive amounts of the substance, he no longer tripped. If a normal person or the old me were to take the amount of those two plant substances that I did, I would be in a trance. I would be in a completely other dimension. I wouldn't be able to talk. I wouldn't be able to do anything. <laughs> As his videos started getting more and more out of touch with reality, his social media accounts began to lose followers. The sentiment towards his videos had also changed, and the dislikes started outnumbering the likes, and the views dropped. Then, out of nowhere, in November, he suddenly deleted all of his old videos, wiping 438 million views from his channel. By doing this, Connor Murphy may have ended any hopes of having a social media career like he once had. I would compare him to Super Hot Fire, a prominent skit YouTuber in 2012 who suddenly deleted all of his battle rap videos that made him famous. Once he did this, his career never recovered. You're a victim! Sadly, it appears Connor is going in this direction. The content he is posting now is undeniably crazy, and it is clear he needs mental help. On Instagram, he discusses things such as victim mentality and goes on to say that coronavirus and being raped is a mindset and people choose to have it. If every lady on the planet just simply decided that uh, rape doesn't exist, it wouldn't fucking exist. It's in your fucking mind. Rape is a mindset. It's not fucking real. Additionally, he dresses like he is from Aladdin and the way he speaks, you can tell something is clearly wrong with him. A unicorn, now I'm a narwhal. Now I'm a Patrick Lyons. <laughs> if you look into his eyes, you can tell something is not right. It's almost as if you can see right through him. 
Considering how much psychedelics he has taken in the past year, it is very possible that his brain is permanently damaged. His most recent YouTube videos don't even have a message or theme. It's just random clips he throws together along with sound effects and colors that he labels as a music video, despite there being no music he created. <laughs> by any means, but according to the definition of psychosis, this is just one of the things Connor is suffering from. I truly hope he does end up getting some help and stops all drug use. Seeing someone mentally decline as much as he has in such a short time period is really sad to see. At this point, I think it's only a matter of time before Connor is put back in a psych ward and takes a break from social media. Until then, he will keep thinking he is God. Hey everyone, so as I was editing this video, Connor Murphy posted his entire financial identity on his Instagram story. About an hour ago, he uploaded a bunch of screen recordings that showed all of the passwords to pretty much every account he has, like his PayPal, his eBay account. He posted his all of his bank information, uh, the routing number. This just shows you how much he has lost it. This man posted his social security number on his Instagram story. Not just his banking information, he posted his social security number to a page that has over 450,000 followers. It just is mind-blowing, really, at this point. Okay, so that was the first video to kind of give us some context on what is going on here. So <clears throat> clearly, as some of you guys already picked up, I do believe that there is an absolute spirit, spiritual possession going on here. And that's one of the things that you haven't heard anybody talk about. If you look up some of the commentators on what's going on with, um, with Connor, is you don't hear many people talk about the spiritual possession side of this stuff. Now, we as Christians absolutely believe when you get into these altered states of consciousness that you're opening yourself up to spiritual possession. And so again, as we move through today's videos regarding Connor, um, you'll see all the things that I've talked about in regards to these Luciferian tendencies within Illuministic spiritualities occur. You're going to see, again, the apotheosis, the idea that they are God, the, the inflation of one's ego in the name of ego death. You're going to see, um, you're going to see the rejection of objectivity, which again, from our perspective as Christians, how do we, how do we, argue, our, uh, how do we do apologetics and argue for our God and our tradition? Well, we do that through objective means. We do that through the laws of logic. We do that through argumentation. We do that through science. We do that through, again, the objective dimensions of our reality. And that's how we try to prove objectively how God exists. Now, the rejection of objectivity leads one to a relativistic as objective worldview where your experience dominates and is the ultimate source of truth. And again, we'll see him talk about this over and over and over again. Uh, the, the, um, the hedonism, right? So when we get into, well, not we, but when people get into these sort of spiritual practices, these illuministic frameworks, You'll see that because they are God, then, uh, good and evil don't really take on any importance because me as God, I can just pursue my own pleasures. And you'll see him talk about, I don't know if I'll, in which specific video, but I remember I've watched so many, about happiness, about happiness, how he was always in pursuit of happiness, and how, how he got famous, and he had money, and he had all the women and all the sex he wanted, but he wasn't happy. And it was once after he did an ayahuasca ceremony, after he what he perceived to be came self-illuminated and then continued that, um, that is what gave him uh, this new insight. And, and so we'll see the sex, money, and power is still, is still being done within his new enlightenment state that he occupies. So in the name of being enlightened, in the name of being God and all these things that he claims, the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, that... What's he doing with it? Well, he's trying to sleep with women, of which he's doing. We'll see in one video he has a sex doll laid out on his bed in pieces. I mean, just, just really degenerate, disgusting things. We'll see, um, the, uh, the, again, the transgression of boundaries. As you already saw in that video, and I've already mentioned, the, the eating of semen, the drinking of urine, the eating of feces. Uh, the pursuit of the left-handed path, his whole yogic practice that he thinks that he came up with, this is tantric 
forms of spirituality, which again, from a Christian worldview, is the left-hand path, things that we want to stay, afo- stay away from. And so as he's moved further and further down this rabbit hole, as he's pursued what he sees as self-enlightenment, the world around him falls apart. The world around him falls apart. And so um, one of the big things about how he has radically, uh, you know, how he's... so. Like, what is psychosis, first of all? I think that w- that needs to be hammered out in, in our discussion today because I'm claiming, and many other people are claiming, is that he has uh, a, a sort of psychosis, that he has a drug-induced psychosis. And so um, let me uh, pull that up real quick. I thought I had it. Uh, let me see here. Um and we'll see. I just wanted to read uh, something for you guys real quick. Uh, here it is. And so let me pull this back up. Okay. So um, so what we have here is what is psychosis, right? We're claiming, and many of the doctors, even in that video, you said people don't know if he's bipolar. And this is, this is professionals trying to diagnose him. They don't know if he's bipolar, schizophrenic, or is having a drug-induced psychosis, which I think it's the drug-induced psychosis because in other videos, he again, he claims that he's been microdosing ayahuasca for every two hours for months at a time. Months at a time. That is not a joke. This, these drugs, di- dimethyltryptamine, is not to be messed with in a microdosing set continuously. And so what he's done is with the dimethyltryptamine, these tryptamine... Uh, molecules, which again mimic, they're very, very similar to serotonin and other neurotransmitters, is that he's had a dopaminergic uh, destruction of his own brain, right? If you take steroids and you do them incorrectly, like you can destroy your own endocrine system. And I think that's really kind of what he's been doing with the psychedelics, using dimethyltryptamine, the most powerful of the mind-altering psychedelics, that his brain hasn't even had the opportunity to stop with the dopamine production. And so that's why he's now in these manic states where he goes, you'll see videos where he can't stop laughing and he has an altered voice, an altered persona. Uh, And then we'll see where he has a mental breakdown as well. Uh, You know, another video. And so, again, this isn't to mock Connor. This isn't to make fun of him. This is to highlight a real potential danger with getting into these psychedelics and not knowing what you're getting into. Uh, again, we are not advocating. We are actually uh, telling people not to engage in these activities. Do not alter your brain chemistry. Do not destroy your psyche. Um, that Again, this is a fair warning to what can happen to people. And again, if you're not even aware, because what we do on Church of the Eternal Logos is I'm trying to talk to you guys about the spirituality behind all this stuff. And that's what today's stream is about. It's not just, oh man, look, he's crazy. Oh, look, he's saying all this stuff. Yes, that is all true. But look how it fits perfectly with the New Age worldview, the spirits were not religious, spirit, uh, psychedelic spirituality, the history of Western magic, Gnosticism itself. A lot of what he's saying is not new. This, it, it actually isn't totally novel. A lot of the stuff he says and is doing, like the, the drinking of urine, rubbing it on his face, eating his own feces, people have been doing this throughout history. This is the left-handed path. And so this is, in my mind, a sort of spiritual possession. And that's why by continuing that dimethyltryptamine and microdoses, he's not allowing him, he hadn't allowed himself to come back to baseline. And so it it is most likely that this has already caused permanent uh, damage to his brain and his, you know, his own endocrine system, his own ability to produce serotonin and stuff like that. So Again, we should have compassion for this guy as much as we're watching and, and seeing how all this stuff is playing out. Um, so what is psychosis? So psychosis is a condition that affects the way your brain processes information. It causes you to lose touch with reality. You might see, hear, or believe things that aren't real. Psychosis is a symptom and not an illness. And that's why it's drug induced psychosis that the psychosis he's exhibiting, this state in which he's occupying, again, we have so many videos that you'll see what I'm talking about. He's occupying a state that is clearly detached from reality. And this is what is called a, a, a psychosis, is that he is in his own little world. And for him, he's almost aware of it. 
And he's almost enjoying it because, again, part of that spirituality that he believes himself to really be caressing in is that it's the realization that everything is subjective. Everything is relativistic. So if I'm detached from what you perceive as objective reality and I'm over in my own world, well, what's it to you? It doesn't matter. And that's kind of his disposition. And so the, the, the idea that you even need to be in touch with reality again, isn't something that necessarily he is in support of or he does even believe based on the, the spiritual presuppositions, the spiritual presuppositions. And again, I think most of the, his friends, it's like when they talk about this, stuff, I don't think they know anything about the New Age. Most of them don't know much about psychedelic spirituality. And so he's saying all these things. They don't have categories and a place to understand it from. Where again, many of us had done psychedelics. Many of you guys watching this stream you know, myself included for sure, we're into the sort of community that he has been lost in, that he's lost himself in. And that's what's so sad. And this can happen to anybody, right? This can happen to anybody. And that why it, it, it is a spiritual warfare. And that really we should pray for him and based on what has happened. Psychosis is a symptom, not an illness. A mental or physical illness, substance abuse or extreme stress or trauma can cause it. Psychotic disorders like schizophrenia involve psychosis that usually affects you for the first time in the late teen years or early adulthood. Young people are especially likely to get it, but doctors don't know why. Even before what doctors call the first episode of psychosis, you may show slight changes in the way you act or think. This is called a uh, prodromal period and could last days, weeks, months, or even years. And again, when we look at, as we'll look at his videos in a chronological pro progression, we'll see how, okay, he's doing microdosing. He's doing, again, the, the, LS, or the uh, ayahuasca stuff. He's doing Syrian rue. He's doing all these different substances, but he seems fairly coherent. He's making content. He's making videos. He's talking and doing all this stuff. He's fairly articulate. But as it moves further and further, as soon as we get into 2021, you'll see, again, he, he's, he begins falling apart cognitively. His mental abilities begin falling apart. And so this idea that you could be in a pre-psychosis state, I think when we look at him claiming to be God and, and how do you, or picking up, I have a video of him picking up a woman as God. Um, these, I think, are, are those early markers of that pre-psychosis state. Sometimes you can even lose touch with reality, even when you don't have a primary psychotic illness, such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. When that happens, it's called secondary psychosis. The episodes stem from something else, like drug use or, medical, or a medical condition. Whatever the reason, they tend to disappear in a short time, and they often stay away if you treat the condition that caused them. And so, again, that's why people have been asking him to stop with the psychedelic use. Like uh, asking him, why do you have to do the, the uh, ayahuasca every day, every two hours? What are you doing? Put it down. Stop with the DMT. And for him, he again, the way he describes it as that's what makes him spiritually sharp. That's what and you get the sense. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Limitless, that his addiction isn't necessarily uh I would say it's not going to be a physical addiction, right? His body isn't going to uh, convulse this, as he stops taking ayahuasca. It's a, it's a psychological addiction. It's the addiction that he perceives himself to be in a superior psychological and spiritual state when he is high on these things. And so we'll show, I'll show you guys a video and where he's claiming that it doesn't even affect him anymore, that he can take, uh, you know, really massive amounts of something like Syrian rue, which is uh, DMT containing a high level. And he'll take it and he'll show, uh, you no know, hour and a half, two hours later. And you can definitely see that his eyes are dilated, that he is high, but he's still articulate. He's still cognitively, it kind of seems to be there. But he says, yeah, it doesn't affect me anymore. He believes that his pineal gland is producing so much DMT that he can just take all these drugs and they don't affect him. Yet, at the same time, he still takes them every day. And that is why, really, anybody who's done psychedelics knows that the more you do it, when you take a larger dose, they're not going to affect you at the same level. And so it's really a sort of a, a scam where, you know, somebody can take massive amounts of DMT or, or ayahuasca or Syrian rue, whatever he was, he was doing. Um, and saying, look, it doesn't even affect me. It doesn't even affect me. But at the same time, for the last months, you've been taking little bits every single day. That's why it's not affecting you in the same way. 
anybody who has experimented with this stuff is aware of that. And so the, the whole idea of the pineal gland, that's a lie. I have a whole video debunking the idea of the pineal gland and it even producing large amounts of dimethyltryptamine. It's a, it's a lie. There is no pharmacological evidence that the, uh, the neural structure of the pineal gland, which is rooted right here in the center of the forehead, that a lot of these left-handed paths, a lot of these illuministic spirituals, spiritual realities, whether it be Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, magic itself, that you know the little bindi uh, right there in the forehead is symbolizing this pineal gland, right? The, activ the activation of the crown chakra. But... Go look at Dr. David E. Nichols. In fact, I did a podcast when I was still into the psychedelic stuff, promoting psychedelic stuff. I did a podcast with Dr. David E. Nichols, and he is the world leader in regards to even synthesizing these things for government research. And he said that we, we've done laboratory research over and over again. There is no way that the pineal gland can even secrete enough DMT to be psychoactive. It's not even close. It's not even close that this is just a myth. This is a myth of the psychedelic community, that there is zero, zero, zero scientific evidence that the pineal gland in the center of your forehead releases dimethyltryptamine as related to near-death experience, as related to psychedelic use, or as related to personal enlightenment. I believe it to be an absolute lie. And so, again, even modern neuropharmacology proves what it is that I'm trying to say. And you can go look it up for yourself. Just look it up you'll see that the, the pineal gland does not. So this idea that he thinks he's so enlightened, he's producing so much DMT in his brain that it doesn't affect him. No, it's more like that you're microdosing all this ayahuasca over a long period of time has lowered your, uh, you know, your effective rate. That, that you, again, it, it isn't going to affect you the same way as it normally does, but that's because he's in a perpetual high. I mean, in, in one, one video, again, I don't know if it's one I'll show you today, but he talks about how he, had, he only slept for 30 minutes. He had a power nap. This or that. Again, when you get in these psychedelics, it's hard to sleep because, of the, because these things are neurotransmitters and they get your brain working. So this stuff, uh, again, it needs, it needs real criticism as we talk about it and, and look through it. So, um, okay, so um, the first one that I want to show you guys then, the first video is... Uh, is him having a mental breakdown because this is from this is a video from Kenny Ko. He's a large larger YouTuber who's personal friends with Connor Murphy, and he made this quick video. This is May 9th of 2020. So this is basically a year ago. Basically a year ago, May 9th of 2020. He made this video regarding uh, Connor Murphy had recently done an ayahuasca. This is his first ayahuasca experience. And then he made this video, it was titled Goodbye, and basically insinuating that he was going to kill himself or something. And this is what caused him to be put into a sort of mental health uh, institute for a week or two. And so I just want to show you again, this is a four minute video uh, by a friend of Connor. And this is one year ago. So this is Connor Murphy one year ago. I don't understand. I've my mental breaking point. All right, guys, today's video is one I'm not really wanting to make, but one that I feel I have to, just for the sake of Connor Murphy and with everything that happened to Luke Sandow. Many of you may know he passed away very recently. Connor Murphy is a friend of mine, and I was shocked to see on his main YouTube channel he uploaded a video simply titled Goodbye where it's nine minutes and 28 seconds long, and it's Connor Murphy having a mental breakdown, talking about his parents, how they don't love him, how they got his sister to commit suicide, how he feels no happiness in his life because his parents just aren't there for him. Because I'm unhappy, nothing that truly matters. <laughs> my parents have sucked away every ounce of happiness in my body. I've done everything just to Please them, just to make them proud, just to make them happy, and it didn't work. I started YouTube so they would be proud of me, so I could be successful and rich. Show them that I could have a fun life, but they don't get it. Now guys, this is a serious topic video, because mental health, I don't think a lot of people realize how serious mental health conditions can be, especially 
when driven to the extent of what we're all going through now being in isolation, quarantine. Now, of course, as soon as I saw this video, I reached out to Connor on Instagram to try and get a message, have not received anything yet back from him because this is the stage where you can see it's a cry for help. Anytime someone emotionally puts themselves, especially on a Connor Murphy YouTube channel where it's normally pranks and reactions and, you know, showing his aesthetic body to girls, getting reactions like I mentioned, for him to come on in an uncut video for nine and a half minutes talking about how unhappy he is with his life and also talking about how comfortable he feels in the bathtub because just a moment of pain, he would just feel happiness and it would all be over. <sighs> Exactly how to do it. I realize why the bathtub feels so amazing because it's trying to tell me something. It's trying to reach out and say you can be at peace here in the bathtub. You just have to go through a little pain before it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am teaching you it's possible. <laughs> Like I'm making this video because maybe some of you that are watching know Connor Murphy personally, maybe you live in his area, maybe you've somehow communicated with him, reach out to him, make sure he's okay. Look, I've had mental breakdowns in the past, I know how tough they can be. I'm not gonna sit here and say I've had the worst mental health ever because that's simply not true. And I know there's people who far exceed the worst mental health I have ever experienced. But I know how YouTube works, I know how lonesome it can be, especially when you don't have the support of your family. So Connor, also, if you see this, man, just please get back to me. You know my phone number and everything's always open if you ever want to talk. But this is just crazy to me, guys. Um, you know, just with quarantine in general, we just lost Luke Sandow, unfortunately. May he rest in peace. And now we have Connor Murphy going on posting goodbye videos on his main YouTube channel. And this is very worrisome. So as I mentioned, guys, you know, just reach out to Connor on Instagram, YouTube, something, get in contact in, with him in some way. I've seen rumors and I really, really hope this isn't true that Connor and his car are missing. Um, which, as I mentioned, I just hope that is just a rumor and not true. But also, I haven't been able to get into contact with him as of yet. But I'll keep you guys all updated if Connor gets back to me. Um, Connor, like I mentioned, if you're hearing this, man, everything's going to be okay. Just work past it. And, of course, my line is always open. But That basically is that video. And, again, Kenny KO, uh, the gentleman who made this video, apparently he's personal friends with uh, Connor Murphy. In fact, there's other videos I watched of um, – of Kenny K.O. actually talking to him much, much more recently, within the last two weeks, three weeks, asking, you know, telling him, hey, I will, I'll purchase you a plane ticket to fly out to Vegas right now, and you can stay with me indefinitely to try to get you healthy. Stop taking ayahuasca. Stop taking DMT, uh, lace substances over and over and over. And, um, and I, I obviously that never happened. Uh, if you guys want, we can play that video, but what I was going to do is now... This was one year. What you just saw was a Kenny KO video from one year ago. And so now we're going to move from May of 2020 to November 2020 and look at uh, Connor Murphy and his psychological state um, as he made a video titled, I Am God. And um, uh, this video is, you'll, you'll see, this is uh, mixed with his like un, uh, just uh, tr trippy, lack of understanding like some of his videos don't even make any sense it's just visuals it's just sound uh it's, it's hard to watch and then they're mixed with these videos which i'm about to show you where he seems to be very present he seems to be very articulate and he's talking about uh again this this illuministic spirituality that he's god he's jesus christ um he's the full realization of the christian god all this different stuff this craziness right this absolute craziness so here is a video now of November 25th, 2020, November 2020, O'Connor Murphy, and this is him describing a message to this guy named Leo Gura of Actualize.org. Uh, Leo Gura of Actualize.org. <laughs> this is actually really interesting because later I have a clip that I want to show you guys where he's actually where Connor Murphy is on the phone with this guy named Leo Gura, and so Leo Gura is a teacher. He's a spiritual teacher, right? And again, his whole thing, if you just go to his YouTube channel, actualize.org, or you go to his website, he has multiple videos. Again, you are God. Exercises to realize you are God. Um, 
again, all this other stuff of the same thing that Connor Murphy is in right now. Leo Gura has a very large million plus YouTube channel talking about this stuff and getting people to become members at his website for, I guess, personal advice and stuff like that. Well, eventually later in today's stream, I want to show you guys a video of Connor Murphy. This is only like uh, a week ago, a week ago. This is very recent of him on the phone with Leo Gura and Leo Gura who promotes the exact same message that Connor Murphy's putting out there is upset because Connor Murphy is causing strife within Leo Guru's community, all this. And what is going to be so interesting again, later when we watch it is how Leo Gura, he has no response to tell, uh, to tell Connor Murphy how he's wrong, why he should stop, uh, why he's not God or any, because that's in fact what he's teaching. Now he's not, in a psychosis state, he, he is in touch with reality, he has a family and all this stuff, but it's like Connor Murphy is the perfect embodiment of this guy Leo Gura's teachings, and at the end, Leo Gura, as we'll show, he's all upset with Connor Murphy because he's become this, may, this huge distraction to psychedelics and the psychedelic community and his community, and he wants him to stop because he's ruining his brand and all this different stuff. But whenever Connor Murphy, again, who's totally out of his mind, pushes him, oh, well, why should I stop or this? He has no response because he's actually embodying that dude's teachings. And so this is uh, back in November 2020. So this is Connor Murphy then making a video to this guy named Leo Gura, who does, you know, who teaches all this psychedelic, you are God, this apotheosis stuff. And he's telling him of his new realization, basically, that Connor Murphy is highlighting to Leo Gura, this is where I'm at. You know, I, I've, I've really, I'm fully awakened to all your teachings. And now, basically, we're both gods, so let's work together and do all this stuff. And in, in later videos, he refers to Leo Gura as like pink, themselves as like pinky in the brain and how they're going to take over the world and they're going to present mass enlightenment for everybody and all this different stuff. So before we get there, though, it's important to understand, you want to hear Connor Murphy describe his new spiritual worldview in his own words, and that's what we're getting ready to watch right now. So this is Connor Murphy describing that he is God, again, November of 2020. I don't know if he's microdosing ayahuasca every, every two hours like he is uh, before, but, but that's what this video is about here, so check it out. 